Spiky, do you know what diabetes is? Yes. Diabetes is a disease in which glucose levels in the blood are too high. It is caused by a lack of insulin in the blood. You are absolutely right. Insulin is a hormone that helps the body break down glucose in the blood. Today, more than 400 million people in the world suffer from diabetes. Oh no, that's a lot of people. Diabetic patients need to regularly inject insulin into their bodies to be able to function in everyday life, right? Where do we get so much insulin for all these patients? Many years ago, we had to extract insulin from animals and purify it for humans. However, that was very inefficient. But now, with biotechnology, we can make use of bacteria to produce insulin in a much faster way. Bacteria? We can't even see them with our eyes. How do we use them to produce insulin? Let's take a closer look at a bacterium and how we can use it to produce insulin. Bacteria, plural for bacterium, are tiny living things that can only be seen with the help of a microscope. They are found everywhere, like in the air, water, and in the soil. Many of the organelles found inside a plant or animal cell, such as mitochondria, Golgi apparatus, endoplasmic reticulum, are absent in a bacterial cell. A bacterium does not have a nucleus. Its main genetic materials are also contained in a loop of DNA in the cytoplasm. It also has smaller circular loops of DNA called plasmids. Bacteria are used to produce insulin by a process called genetic engineering. Genetic engineering involves the removing of genes from one type of cell and transferring them to another completely different cell. Let's take a closer look at this process. First, a plasmid is isolated from the bacterium. Then, a small section is cut out of the circular plasmid by restriction enzymes, also called molecular scissors. The gene that codes for insulin from human DNA is isolated and inserted into the gap in the plasmid. DNA ligase, a specific type of enzyme, joins these two DNA molecules. The resulting structure is called recombinant DNA. This plasmid is now genetically modified and then put back into the bacterium. This bacterium is now a transgenic organism. Transgenic organisms are organisms that have foreign genes inserted into them. The bacterium is then cloned, a process in which multiple copies of the same organism is produced. We end up with many bacterial cells that contain the gene that codes for human insulin. These bacteria are then provided the right conditions to start producing insulin. The insulin is then purified and packaged into bottles, and insulin pens are used by patients with diabetes. Wow! I never thought that such small organisms can be used to produce useful products like insulin. Time for an exercise! Think of one reason why bacteria are used to make insulin. Pause the video and answer the question. It is easy to grow bacteria in large quantities as they grow quickly when placed in the right temperature and given the right food supply. This way, they can produce large quantities of insulin in a short time. Let's summarize. 
To introduce human genes into a bacterium, we need to isolate the required human gene and a plasmid from a bacterium. Then, with the help of restriction enzymes and DNA ligase, a cut is made in the plasmid and the human gene is joined at the cut. The recombinant plasmid is then reintroduced into the bacterium. After that, the bacterium is cloned so that each bacterial cell contains the human gene. These cells then produce the substances which are coded by the human gene. One application of this technology is the production of insulin, a hormone needed for diabetic patients.